Welcome to episode five of Anax School. Now, if you're a three shape user, today's your lucky day. I mean, that's probably why you're tuned in, I would guess, because we're going to talk about designing thimble bridges in three shape, which has been a mystery to me for all of the five, six years we've been marketing Pecton. Uh, people call me with this question a lot. How do I design it in three shape? Over the last five, six years, we've tried to offer courses. We've tried to offer um, lectures and it's always been a tricky topic. So I was so happy when I talked to Mark Dixon, a good friend of ours here at Annextent, a few weeks ago, and he was not having any problem. He'd figured out a process that really worked for him. So the big question was, will you come on Annex School and share it with everybody else? And he said, yes. So today we're gonna have Mark walk us through the three shape way, which as I understand is wrought with complications, obstacles and catastrophic errors that make you start from scratch all over again. That's not fun, ain't nobody got time for that. So today we're gonna learn what Mark calls the smart people's way. A compilation of different mentors of his and his own experience has led him to use this kind of predictable fail safe design method now. And he's gonna share that with you. So welcome to episode five of Annex School. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you doing? Good, man. As I told you, <sighs> y'all you know, don't get to see behind the scenes, but right before I click that little go live button, I make whoever the guest is this week listen to how nervous I am. <laughs> for like no, that's minutes. all right. You're you're fine. It's always <laughs> it's always nerve wracking because a whole bunch of people are watching you right now. I know. They're judging I know. you. I know. Hey, some thank of you. them love you and some of them hate you. There's nothing you can Man, do. Man, I haven't had a heckler yet, but today <laughs> might be the day. Bring it on. Yes. I kind of like Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. So we have a tradition at Annex School. Mark, you know we what do. it is. Yes. What? I want to have a little shot and say cheers. Oh, that's like a big shot. Is this a big shot? I don't know. I'm not a drinker. You're a big shot. That's not much. <laughs> okay. So, Mark, unscrew the cap. Yeah, I'm unscrewing it. You can see it's sealed. It's sealed. Alyssa, yeah, come it's on. Sealed. Alyssa's gonna have a drink with us because she's gonna, she's the director over here while you're director over there. Oh, nice. Mm. Hey, Alyssa. Okay, so cheers to episode five of Annex School, guys. Welcome. Cheers. The whole thing, huh? <laughs> See, that's what I do here at Annex School. It's fireball. It's cheating. Up, up the instructor. Now he's gonna tell you all the you secrets. Didn't, she didn't do it. <laughs> Okay, well, Mark, thank you so much for being here. As I am well aware from all the questions I get that I'm unable to answer, honestly. There's some issues. You might have uh, be able to answer some questions after today, though. I know, that's my goal. That is my goal. And for everybody else, too, to walk away from this with a better idea of how to manage it themselves. So when I was talking to you to prepare for this, you helped me understand what the problems mm. were. And you said, you know, there are all these little nuances to the software where if you do something just the wrong way, it kills everything and you have to start from scratch all over again. Yeah. Every software has its temperaments, you know? Um, so when people ask me, how do you build those thimble bridges? How do you design them? Well, I usually ask them, well, how do you want to do it? Yeah. Says, it really gets dictated by at what point in the treatment plan you're going to get started. What do you have already? You got anything that exists already for the patient? It just gets some, uh, you know, fix your level impressions or scans and you're ready to go to final. I mean, it's different for every everything. But uh, <clears throat> so is there, a, is there a preferred starting point for you? Is there a place where you like to yeah. start with your clients? Where, how do, where do you start from? Ideally, the same, so this so you you probably already know the answer to this, um, but it's the same place. We're always going to start the most important part of the whole treatment plan. And that's the diagnostic wax up. Right. right. So that's where I start. Um, and chances are, if you're lucky, you know, everything was planned surgically and you have a diagnostic wax up pattern set in stone already to get started with once, you know, you get the case, but that's just not always the case. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, are you ready to do this? I'm ready to do that. Yeah. I've been ready. All right. So you want me to I share the screen? 
Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, well, you don't have to yet. Okay, I'm hiding it. I'm going to look right at you. So, okay. you guys, I know that you really prefer to just create a single order and get your entire case done in one shot, but that's actually the problem. That is the problem. Um, so, we're going to do this case. We're going to jump into it, and we're going to do it the way 3Shape would like you to do it on 2019 software. We'll talk a little bit about the differences in the 2020 software. Um, it's actually very clever, but I still don't go that route because of the way the three shape design software works. So in ExoCAD, while you design, when you hit save, it saves everything in a scene. You can recall that information any time of the day. With three shape, every move, every operation, every click, every time you hit enter, control, whatever, it gets recorded and saved into the design tree and the design tree is set, separated into different, uh, different parts of your two type indications and will dictate, you know, that those parts of the process tree. Um, so you're going to design a full mouth. I'm pretty sure that maybe the doctor wants some screen captures. Maybe the patient wants to see it. Uh, maybe somebody's going to log in on team viewer and take a look. So you're going to design the whole thing. You're going to close the case. You're going to open it again. Right. But with the problem with that is you, you don't do everything exactly the same as you did the first time. And this could be a four hour design process from start to finish. Mm. Um, you're going to have a problem. You're going to create one little thing in the timeline of all the operations you did the first time, one little thing different, and it'll start to affect everything down the line. And you might not even notice right away. You might keep going forward, but it starts getting worse and worse. And before you know it, everything's gone. You've okay. lost everything. You've lost your case. If you didn't hit close, certain files weren't generated that could really, you know, save your ass if you're in trouble and you just spent four hours doing your best job because you know now that you have to restart, you're not going to spend four hours doing your best job again. You're going to try to get it done like you split. It's just not going to look as good as the first time. I hate that. You hate that. We all hate that. I hate wasted time. So everything that I do is modeled around not wasting my time. I don't want to waste my time. So let's jump right into this case if you guys want to take a look here, and I'll tell you what we're going to do with this. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So nothing fancy, nothing special, just a maxillary cast. This is a stone cast that was scanned and verified. We've got our BioHorizons multi-unit protective caps, which also double as the scan bodies in the, 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 the three shape library. So we've got that, we scanned that in, but we also had some impressions, got everything scanned in. So this isn't a digital case. This is on a stone cast because I wanted to just show you, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, we're I, did, yeah. I did have a question from somebody that wasn't oh, yeah. gonna be able to join the live feed, but, but wanted me to ask a question on their behalf. When you say you've scanned it in, she has a scanner that doesn't fit an articulator. So I know I'd mentioned before she was she had some questions about scanning. You'd mentioned that's kind of a totally separate topic that we're not going to cover today. Yeah. But when you scan, are you scanning on the articulator? If you've got an E-series scanner, you can mount your stone cast and mount them, put the whole the whole entire semi-adjustable, fully adjustable articulator right in the E-series scanner okay. um, and scan that bite. It's actually great. I love it. Okay. But if you've okay. got a absolutely wonderful D D one thousand, D two thousand, nine eight seven, all of the above, um, you're not going to fit your whole articulator in there. If you don't have anything, and what you're looking at on my screen is all that you got, you're going to have to get you know fancy with some putties and rubber bands and hot glue and popsicle sticks. You don't <laughs> want to do that either. So, yeah. but the doctor, you know, your client's not going to send the lab this case without a pre-op situation, a provisional situation. Okay. Uh, diagnostic wax up you already sent them that they drop on the floor and destroyed and you have to wax up again all that good stuff okay you're gonna have more information if this just showed up like this to my lab i wouldn't do anything i'd build a you know i'd, I'd go off the lower teeth and i'd build an ideal try and i'd be like okay you're gonna have to take a picture of this in the mouth um but that's very rare that you're not going to receive anything okay. um so this is the information we get um i didn't have it right here for you because it's not necessary but know that you would scan this and you'd scan the pre-op situation, the diagnostic wax up situation. And you'd, you'd stitch the pre-op maxillary arch to the edentulous maxillary arch and you'd find your occlusion from there. But that involves, um, it should be easier than it actually is, but it's a very simple two minute process of just realigning things. And we're not gonna do that today, but we can when we get there. When I show you the tool that we would use to do that, you can kind of use your imagination and get there. So, oh, and hey, Mark, just really yeah. quick, I wanted to let everybody know that um, 
So those of you who are new to Annex School, if this is the first time watching, we have this set up to where if you comment on the live stream in Facebook or the live stream on YouTube, we can see that comment and we can pull that into the broadcast and ask Mark your question. So I'll be watching the comments along throughout the show. If you have a question, don't wait to ask it later. If you have a question about the stage we're talking about, just by the nature of what we're showing today, it's going to be a lot easier to ask the question and handle the question while we're on just that step. Stop me right there. Yep. Stop you right there. So anyway, just let you guys know if you're watching, you can ask questions live and we'll answer as many as we can. And if anybody uh, wants to join us, oh, feel yeah, free I to go live you on your webcam. Yeah. We'll bring you in here, but you have to have alcohol. So <laughs> looking at this thing, you know, I had already had a diagnostic situation from when we did the treatment planning for the surgery and everything. Um, you know, I'd love to show everybody all of that, but we can't do that in the time that we have. So we have to, you know, suspend disbelief and pretend that we know what we're doing here and we have everything. So I can assure you I have everything else. So this is the case that we're working on now. <clears throat> Let's get started right in three shape. Obviously the first thing you're going to do is a diagnostic wax up, right? But I know people still aren't doing that. And even if they have one that existed that they did, you know, two months before or pre-COVID, it was February when you sent the doctor the surgical guide and you did all that, you know, prosthetically planned from your diagnostic situation that you digitally designed. Um, that was February. Do you know where your files are? Most people don't anymore. So you got to set yourself up for these types of cases for the long run and set yourself up for any issues that you're going to have where, you know, you can prove that you did the best that you could do, take pictures, take screen captures and save each and every element, you know, on the side. So let's pretend we're gonna do this the three shape way. And we're gonna build a thimble bridge and we're gonna build a split file thimble bridge. So we wanna manufacture the bar, whether it's titanium, chrome, cobalt, or you got your HPP like Pecton, um, or just a trine. Maybe you're gonna print a trine. It's really economical, print it in minutes. It's gone, it's out the door and it's a lot of information to deliver. Uh, to your client at once did so swiftly. So we're gonna pretend that we have a diagnostic wax up and we did it and we're gonna get started on this orders. But real quick, one thing people don't know is when you build a case and you're finished designing, some things within the directory gets updated. So this is a very um, basic, uh, you know, go to your Windows directory, all right? explore the order, and in here you have anatomy elements. That's your design sort of after you closed. As soon as you close the order and it saves, those anatomy elements get put in here, and it doesn't matter if you built a bridge or whatnot or whatever, you, these are gonna be your individual files. So you'll see all the teeth that we designed from before, and they're, they're red, don't ask me why. But let me just take a look at this diagnostic wax up that I did before, and we'll take a look at each of these individual elements. And this was uh, the diagnostic wax up that I did, let's say February, pre-COVID, before everything shut down, right? And now, patient comes back, they did the surgery, hey, the doctor sends me- Hey, yeah. real quick, Min is telling us that there's a new rule to this show that you and I actually joked about. <laughs> you need to take a shot each time a three-shape error pops up, okay? Okay, that sounds good. I don't have that much, but I have a list that she didn't do. And if it's okay with Tay, okay. and just uh, you can ask Lisa. No, I'm not a drinker. I don't. I just don't drink. So okay, two... maybe don't. Man, I'm sorry. I could yeah. take a. I could take a shot, but then somebody's got to work the controls, man. I don't know if we can do it your way. <laughs> um, I'll fly. You just so if I drink two hard apple ciders, like I'm feel pretty good. Okay. I'm talking to so strangers. Let's, let's like, yeah, I would you know? love to make it that kind of show, but I don't think you've got the right people on the show for your way today. Okay, go well, ahead. No, Sorry. if I just do this real fast, that guarantees episode two, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because then we'll have to finish. Do an episode. So what a lot of people do is they go to design their case that they did months ago as they move forward in the treatment plan and they bring in their diagnostic plan so they can see it and redesign yeah. everything so it's very close or they're morphed to it. Blech. Don't want to morph. Why morph when you have these elements right here? Let's call okay. them elements. Think of these as each, each one's just a little tiny bit of. The overall picture. Well, if you spent four hours designing this case, how much time did this little guy cost you? You know, so you have it already. Why are you redesigning anything? Just bring in the old, the new information, adapt it to the, the old information and reapply it and you're done. 
So what's nice is you can do a DSD, do a diagnostic, do the provisionals, do the finals, and you don't have to redo the case every time. You're just bringing in information and readapting it, and that's going to apply. So let's pretend that I did do a diagnostic wax up. How do you do a diagnostic wax up? We don't want to spend much time on it, but let's go over it real quick. Let's just, just call this. Uh, yeah. Just a minute. Just, oh, just this is already a four. Sure. So with that many interruptions, that's a this is a four hour um, episode uh -huh. now. Yeah, whatever. This is a good question though. How did you get to anatomy elements? Miguel Ortiz is asking. Well, they weren't paying attention, and they're going to have to watch this later oh, after they subscribe. Oh, Miguel, you should have so been paying attention. So inside every order, uh -huh. so we have our Windows computer, right? You can go to C, Users, 3Shape, uh, sorry, C, Users, Documents, Downloads, Images, Pictures of Tacos, right? Because mm -hmm. you like tacos and you have all these pictures. Well, in your Windows directory, if you're uh, not familiar with Windows so much, you can go right-click Advanced and explore the order. You're going to go explore the order, what's inside and what's inside is your Windows directory, and there's all kinds of good stuff in here. There's stuff in here that will save your ass. And if you know how to use it, your life's gonna be so much easier, I promise you. You're not gonna do things the way you've been doing them. When I do things, I save all these little bits and pieces on the side in their own little special place for each case, because I can go grab them real fast. Yeah. Um, but here's your anatomy elements folder. If that's not in there, it's because you did not close your case. If you set up an order that we're about to set up, and you're gonna design a uh, split file thimble implant bridge and all the works, and you spend four hours designing it and all of a sudden you have a catastrophic error because something just didn't work right because the software can be temperamental and you're not sure and you're just kind of like, I think that spline looks good, I'll click next and all hell breaks loose. That's when you come to the Facebook 3Shape study group with 28,000 yeah. members for the best help you could possibly get and you yeah. say, hey, you guys, eh, help me. And you know, we'll, we'll try to straighten you out but usually these problems, they shouldn't be happening. If you're having hey. these problems, they shouldn't be happening. Also, I just wanted to say, we've had a couple questions already about being able to view this later if people have to run or they're missing one no. or two parts. $500. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg, but no, all of these Annex School episodes are archived on our YouTube uh, channel after they air. So you can go to youtube.com slash Annex Dent North America and you can watch them all later. If you want to ask live questions, if you want them to answer questions on the show, you got to view the live broadcast, but you can watch the archived broadcast anytime. And if you want, um, I can give you some uh, three-shape users' uh, phone numbers, just not mine. <laughs> so we'll have those on a ticker at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, and then uh, I have a question, real important question. How big? Oh, this is, is bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how far, how, wait, how long are we into the episode? Because I was talking fast too. We're already we in minutes? Two minutes. Okay, I might have. I love the hecklers. I love the jokes. We're gonna need season three. We got a lot. Episode fourteen. Okay, keep going. Sorry, I won't interrupt you anymore until there's no, like no, no. I don't mind it. Question. I just don't know if you want to finish or not. Okay, I do. I'd, I'd like to. <laughs> we won't. Well, we're ten minutes behind. We're just getting started. So, anatomy elements, you guys, find that in the Windows directory. The order. It's all the work you did. You spent four hours of this. What's four divided by, what is that, eight, 10, whatever? You know, that's that's work. So I don't even leave it in there. Why would you leave it in there? Mm -hmm. That's just a three shape. So I copy and I paste it in a folder for that patient in a separate directory on the NAS. Backed up, backed up. It's there. I have it forever. So, because sure. you spent a lot of time building that. It's it. akin to shipping your diagnostic wax up on the cast with one little piece of bubble wrap. Just throw it in the box, ship it. Come on, you don't want to do your wax ups again. You don't like when, the, when your clients send your diagnostic wax ups back to you all busted in pieces for the same reason. Like, let's just save all this data. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same shit. So okay. th these anatomy elements that I did from a diagnostic wax up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy these and I'm gonna paste it on my desktop. Okay. I'd put it somewhere else, but for this, I'm gonna leave it right there. Remember that they're right there. Okay. All right. But how do you do a diagnostic wax up? Go find the videos that I have of how to do a diagnostic wax up. But the reason that I like to use this tooth type indication right here, temporary unprepared model, is because it's the most simplest machine in the dental specific software. You got your crowns, you got your implants, you got your bridges, you got this, you got that, you got everything. They're all complex little machines that have margins and interfaces and extra wire meshes that you don't even see and things going on. And we don't need that right now. Temp unprepared model, forget it. What's in a name? Nothing. Temp unprepared model, forget about it. They should just rename it Freeform. Yeah. F R E E F O R M Freeform. All it does is it gives me the opportunity to load up a case, jump into the design real quick, no margins or nothing, 
and start moving teeth around and positioning them and then saving those positions. That's it. That's not its purpose. That's what I use it for. That's what everybody else is using it for. That's what you should be using it for. Because as soon as I'm done with that case, it's set in stone. I have that yeah. folder titled anatomy elements. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how much time I spend doing anything else with the case that is set in stone. So that being said, how do you do a diagnostic wax up? There's many different ways. Get it done. The reason I choose temp prepared models other than that is if you choose temp pontix, which is the correct way to do it, and you can find three shape videos on how to do temp pontic diagnostic wax up, you have a few extra steps and a lot of splines to draw that aren't fun. I do it in one order and I subtract the teeth and I save those scans and then I create another order and, and do everything. So we have our diagnostic wax up. That's done. We're skipping that part. If you don't know how to do a diagnostic wax up, you need to do that before you watch this lesson. So diagnostic wax up is done. Now, if you want to take a look at it, you can see it in the preview down here. But we'll go ahead and look at the 3D preview here. And it's funny, right? It's because my plan is to do a 3D printed try-in. My plan later is to do a final. My plan later is to do the provisional. So when we set up the diagnostic situation before the surgery, you know, we placed them in the best possible place, um, saved all that data. And then after COVID, everybody came back to work and they're like, hey, green light, let's go. Here's the impressions. We did a verified cast and a printed try-in, right? So the cast is verified. This got shipped out. It was connected to the, the multi-unit interfaces and printed. Um, shipped right out. So easy, so easy. Uh, everything looks good still. So now we're just going to pretend we're jumping to final. So I have this pattern here that was my diagnostic wax up in individual elements. And if we and take what, a look at it. Show us first, right, is the three shape way to do it. Like the way the software is built to work. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. But remember but remember this CAD file sort of later because there's a separate, separate issue, but we still have the elements. Okay. So we want to set this up and we're going to do the thimble bridge. So I have the order here, but we're going to set it up again and I'll jump back to that one. So there's the patient's name. I'm doing a thimble bridge, what do you have? You've got your bar, you've got your crown. You may or may not have like your gingiva design. You have to choose it on here if that's the case. So let's do it three shapes way. We're gonna do anatomical crowns so that we build them full contour and we draw a spline and we cut them back and we tell the software to remove undercuts. Now we have that perfect undercut free preparation. And then it's gonna become, the gingiva will be the bar part. Um, and you would think that's it. Then you copy and append and now you have to build your crowns on it. So a lot going on. And just in this order for 2019, this is how it goes. Uh, what two through are we doing? We're doing these. Let's, we're doing the adapt. So let's pretend we are, yeah, because we're not, we're going to go the other order. So I don't remember what teeth it was, but let's pretend these were our implants, right? Okay. We're going to choose our multi-unit anatomical crown. So we choose the anatomical abutment. And we're gonna choose whatever you like, whatever you're working with. That's a whole another ball game. Um, let's choose this. Something I made on always direct to multi-unit, right? Um, choose your material. Let's go with some pecton. Of course, why not? Right? Print it, millet, whatever. So those are the screw retained crowns on the implants. And now we need to make sure we choose the same material for everything. And let's just grab some Pontix, right? Because we do have Pontix in here. We'll go up here, we'll make those Pontix, and we make sure we choose the same material and manufacturing. So now we have our Pontix. Okay. We didn't even choose the right one. So let me go down. We want anatomical Pontix, right? Mm -hmm. So we get rid of this. We want this menu. So we're going to choose the anatomical Pontix and make sure we choose the same material, same manufacturing setup. So now we have our anatomical pontics. We got our anatomical screw retained crowns. We want to bar them and bridge them. So we just click gingiva. All right. It really wants me to click everything. Click gingiva. Now you've got your gingiva full contour. You've got gingiva with a cutback. I imagine you would be doing a cutback so that you can build it full contour, get a visual, and then cut it back one millimeter, one and a half millimeters. And you know exactly how much composite you're going to lay on there. So you're going to grab this one. So you would think that's it, but if you wanted to, you could add the models to this order, and people do for your digital implant models. Um, you would obviously set this up as an impression, and we're going to. And then you bridge them all together. So what we have here are four tooth type indications. We've got anatomical pontic, anatomical abutment, anatomical gingiva, 
and the connector. The connector is going to be a two type indication because now you're going to have that finalized step where everything becomes one piece. That's just another step. Now, that's how you set it up in 2019 mm -hmm. because that's how it works. This is just for the bar. In 2020, if you're working with that, they're very clever. They set it up so that you do this order, but as soon as you're done, you start building the crowns on top at the same time. So you can get things manufacturing at the same time. In 2020, to get that to work, you're gonna set this order up just like this, except, and this was what was clever, you don't bridge them. And that just tells the software to sort of, that's the route we're gonna go. That's the design process tree that the three shape dental software dental system is going to start to follow as you design. So with a lot of these um, webinars and courses and lessons, it's weird that often somebody doesn't show you how to set up the work order because when you set up the work order, that's the most important part. The three shape software is going to dictate and guide you the rest of the way. So you see a lot of great webinars and, and great tutorials and you're like, but I, I still can't do anything because what did you set up in the order form? Cause we've got a yeah. lot of stuff going on here. It's a very big menu. Now, we're going to go ahead and bridge this. We will say, okay. Now we're ready to scan. So you open up scan at dental, bring in all your scans and stuff. I already did that. We don't have time for that today. So I can in just import the information. That's, you know, what I did over here. So if we're curious about what I imported, I know you guys know how to use the opposing arch. We're not going to worry about all that. We're going to keep it simple. We've got our, our, our impression and all that. Um, so let's jump into design. What's our uh, time at now? We're at 20, we're about halfway through the hour, but you know, you and I talked about how we could go a little longer if we needed to. We'll never- We're 27 minutes in, man. So how many people we got watching us? 73. That's it? I think that's it. But um, a lot of people have asked if they can watch it later. So I think people are getting busy, which is good. One dollar, one dollar. One dollar. It's Friday. <laughs> it's um, Friday. So we're going to design this, right? We're going to hit next, set it up, set it up. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to tell you because I had a shot. It's like two shots to me, right? So inside this order, after I was done setting it up, before after I'm done scanning it, before I design anything, it's not necessary, but try to before you design anything, go advanced, explore order. And you're going to take that folder right here, anatomy elements, and you're going to paste it in here. And you're going to name it anatomy for reuse, which I've already done. So remember that folder I saved, those are from our diagnostic wax up. You drop them into your new order that you haven't designed yet and you rename it anatomy for reuse. And when you get to the part where the smile design pops up and you choose the teeth, your original elements will just be there waiting for you. You don't have to do anything, they're done. It's not a morph to, it's not a copy, it's the original. Every little, every little tiny triangle and every little tiny mesh and triangle and vertices, exactly the same and it speeds things up. So that's what we did there. And there's a hundred videos on that. And that's not the special stuff about today. So we're going to keep going. We mark our annotations. We jump in. We've got our DES tie bases for our BioHorizons case. Why did we choose DES? I don't remember. But it's always going to be dependent on your final prosthetic, what, what components you're going to be able to use, because they're all different. Some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some are wide. Some you can see when they're smiling and some you can't. They have a nice flush finish with your prosthetic. So you'll jump into this part. Now it's grayed out because that's already been done. If you didn't do anything yet, your original order shows up just like this and you just hit next. These were the original teeth from the original design from the diagnostic and prosthetics plan. But normally if you don't have anything, this is the point right there in that step. That's the step where you're going to sit there for four hours and design everything to a T, every little bit, every little bit of texture, go through excursive movements, four dial in. Hours? Well, some people want to do it in 10, but, you know, one hour to four hours. So for me, it's one hour to four hours. If everything looks great, um, everything's set up perfectly, you can get an upper, full upper diagnostic wax up done in an hour. But then when you get cases where maybe the photos are terrible and you're not really sure where you're going to go with it because the patient's looking up into outer space during the, the <laughs> photography or, you know, you're not doing a full arch or you've, you're doing a full arch, but you got a lower and you've got three occlusal planes and you're trying to, you're just trying to manage a, a not so ideal situation the best you can. And the best way to do that is just spend some more time and a little TLC on it. Or you're just doing six units and the patient was born without, or they lost, you know, a lateral 25 years ago. 
and Sam you've got, Lee says it sounds like you're real slow. <laughs> and you've got like 30 millimeters on these three teeth and 700 millimeters on these three teeth. And you're trying to, you know, but no, well, that's the thing. Everybody out there is like, uh, I need this done. How, I need it, need, it, need it. Everybody wants it right now. I, I yeah. don't do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I understand. But if you're like production live, you're probably not even going to want to watch this lesson. You're going to watch um, part three or two if we get it done of the actual lesson because we're going yeah. nowhere. Yeah. So let's jump through it because we need to get to what I wanted to show you. I don't need okay. to show you this, but let's jump through. You're showing us where, you, where the software gives us to go. Don't crash on us. Don't worry. Okay. Well, look up top. Look up top of the screen. Do you see this? Yeah. This is the design process tree. One, two, um, skip the first one. That's creating the order. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you get to save it. You've got nine processes in this whole design tree that you need to get through. But what if you could just do those separately and faster and easier without all the, you know, that's what we're going to do. They're well, not, not going to get anywhere either. Well, this is the, the correct way to do it you know, as far as the way it was designed. Okay. The way three-shaped software dental system is designed, this is the way to do it. But it's temperamental. There's a lot of little things going on here. And there's a lot of information. There's a lot of ones and zeros. So it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. What was the next step? I forget where we're at. But we're going to have an error. I already got it. It was like, pfft. so the plan was to just do this from start to finish. Um, but then I got the errors. And I'm like, yes, yeah, I don't know why I waste my time. Then we're going to jump into the other way to do it. And it actually, what was funny is I had decided if we do it this way and I spend 45 minutes to 50 minutes on the way three shape wants you to do it, I could still get it done the other way. That's how fast the other way is. So this is what happens. It wants you to connect each tooth to the implant before you move forward with the case. Here's the problem. Uh, I either got the tooth numbers and gauged them incorrectly for which implant site, or I didn't know. I didn't have a diagnostic. I don't know what teeth we're doing. You don't know how many, you're doing a full arch. You don't even know how many teeth you're replacing until you set up a diagnostic wax up, until you start gauging these things. So what you have to do now is stretch these teeth over to these little elephant trunk things and then connect them. That's just a pain. How many operations did I spend going from a finished design diagnostic to this step where I had to move everything over and get them close to the implants with the morphing tools to connect. And that was down here, 103 operations, 103 clicks, just to get everything wow. tuned. So we're gonna skip that next time because that's just a huge waste of time. So let's hit next. We're connected now. The next step should be cleaning it up a little bit. Oh. Um, no, this isn't an error. This is just like saying, hey, um, the next step is cleaning it up a little bit and doing the gingiva. Okay. So let's go do the gingiva next. Remember, we spent four hours putting this together, designing it in the fifth icon over. Okay. And now we're moving forward. That was my morning. I had some coffee. I stopped. I stepped away from the computer for a minute, took a phone call. I came back. Okay, I'm finally, it's noon. I'm done with my diagnostic wax up. Let's move forward. It's still thinking a little bit frozen right now. This appears to be frozen. Uh-oh. Oh, there it goes. No. All right. So now it's time for, oh, it just, yeah. Or did it do this? Okay. So, no, no, no. We're not even doing gingiva yet. We have to do the anatomical part, and this is where I quit. Because <laughs> I said, no, thanks. Yeah, so it's still catching up. You can see the, the issues. This is where the air was, and now that I'm hitting redesign to get the air. So the next step, you have to draw a spline around the new margins on your gingiva bar with okay. preps. And you're gonna have to draw that spline on each and every individual tooth. You'll be making them trans, you know, transparent and opaque so you can see through them and see the lines of the teeth. And you'd wanna draw them really nice and really perfect. Then see it's frozen, this is, so this is the problem. You know, and there's nothing installed on this computer. This computer's main purpose is to have nothing on it but Except free shape right. to stream. Do okay. you understand? So. And it's, you know, it's done. Because there's a lot of information. There's a lot going on. We're done. That's it. Uh, I got to so chug, gotta both, I gotta chug all these now, right? <laughs> so I have to control all delete out. Okay. If I had spent four hours designing this. All of that's wasted. And got to here. Oh. Those files weren't saved. <sighs> so I'm going to control all delete. I'm going to grab our task manager. We're going to go into designer and we're just going to finish. Ouch. 
we're going to call Arjun, Core3D, Cap, Zong, whoever it is. And you're mm -hmm. going to get someone on the phone who is not somebody that you really ever speak to because those people who can actually help you, they're all managers and supervisors now. You got the new team. You got Team 2020 on the phone, and they can't help you with this stuff. Yeah. And people that I help, tell me. I just spent five hours on the phone. And then I call you and you had it in five minutes. Well, that's because nobody knows. I can't help. I can't help it. Okay. So how much time do we have? Because this is going to be cool. This is where we're actually going to learn some stuff. We have like 30 or 45 minutes left. Perfect. So remember, I did a diagnostic wax up. I did it and I'll, and I'll do it ah, real quick. Somebody's given us a comment. Control shift escape takes you straight to the task manager. Maybe you learned. Maybe you learned ah, something. I like that. Why would I hate Control Alt Delete student. ever again? <laughs> Why is Control Alt Delete like if there was a Control Delete meme, it would be that. Why is yeah. it not Control Alt Escape? Was it Control Alt is or Control Shift Escape? Control Shift Escape. I'm golden. If you knew about Control Shift Escape, press the number one. If you didn't know about it. Type the number two and hit enter. Let me know how that goes in a few you're minutes. Feeling, you're feeling a little bit ashamed that you didn't know. No, it's great. Oh, I like it. That's okay, but you like it. valuable. Thank you, Samantha. No, it's very helpful. Samantha Merrifield. Mm-hmm. Very good, Samantha. Thank you very much. And she's happy right now because I've, I've I've helped her with a few things. So she's going, Oh yeah, I got to show Mark something. All right. Yeah, no, I'm good. That's what's I don't know. That's Do you want to know why I didn't know that? Because no one ever told me. So that's where these lessons come in. You don't know. You don't have to feel stupid. You hey, it's all like, twos. It's all twos, Mark. You're not the only one that just learned. Thank you, Samantha. I didn't know that. I'm so stupid. No, Thank nobody you. told you yet. So Louis it's just been you. He's the only one so far. <laughs> You're not stupid. You're fine. Just no one ever told you. I'm telling you right now. Watch yeah. this. Yeah. We had our diagnostic wax up, right? I have that file. So inside oh, your diagnostic wax up. Hold on. Now you're shifting shifting to your way, right? This is yes. your way now. Okay. Yes. We're in the smart people's way. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do the smart people's way. Well, we had an error on the other one. You want me to hit control delete and try again? No. You're in key. You're going to, even if you get, it's just, it's, it's not three shapes fault. That's a large complex piece of information. And one little thing it just didn't like, it's not a big deal. It okay. doesn't mean, you, you know, it doesn't mean the software is bad. It just means that this type of restoration is a big challenge for it, right? Um, it's because the software was designed to accommodate and interpolate and use its algorithms on these ideal perfect situations. For example, all these implants are in a perfect, perfect position. They're all at the optimal subgingival levels. They're all pointing exactly like, but that doesn't happen. We get implants that are coming out of the patient's nose. Yeah. And you have to connect to it. And that's just kind of where we're at. And that's why the software just doesn't have a good time with it. Um, and that's why we want to eliminate those things. So how are we going to do it? Okay. So real quick, I'm going to set up a diagnostic wax up. We're going to do this from fresh, all right? You're going to learn. We're going to do it from fresh. Let's call this uh, fresh, right? Fresh diagnostic wax up. And let's just wax up from here to here real quick. Tampon prepared model. Digital impression. Uh, I don't care about the antagonist. This is just an example. And we're going to bridge them. That's the important part. It all needs to be one piece, right? Let's say, okay, we're going to do this real quick. I'm going to import that edentulous arch that I have, right? Mm -hmm. Annex school, edentulous arch, open. Just That's it. Us. Now pretend I loaded the pre-op, the antagonist. Okay. I took the CBCT and I converted it to an STL and brought that in with the Bellius 3D scan. The whole shebang, suspend disbelief, pretend that's what we did here. Real quick, let's design an uh, eight-unit diagnostic wax up as fast as possible. Put the timer on. Put the timer on. Booyah. All right. How long is it going to take? Step one. Done. You want to trim it? Trim it. You don't want to trim it? Don't trim it. Done. Annotations. One, two, blah, blah, blah. These don't. These. Okay. I'm not going to screw around. These actually do matter. They don't for me. But they do matter. If you... Put them all right in the like horrible places, and you don't just at least spread them out a little bit. Your whole library is going to come in really tiny because uh, the okay. each annotation is like. So you do kind of have to take a little care of them. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, brand new case, right? Insertion direction, set it. So what do we do? We had uh, to put 
annotations down. Ooh, big reveal way too soon because that's not supposed to get seen yet. We're supposed to keep oh. that in the library. But because I was messing, that's the last library I messed with. You let the can out of the bag. Right now, Bobby's like, <laughs> so there's our teeth. It shows up. We're already designing. This is what I'm talking about. It's been how long? It's been a minute. It was less than a minute. In less than a minute, I went from, you could do a full arch, from the order to being in the design. That's why, you no know, margins, no this. It's just so nice to be able to jump in here. So that yeah. was one minute. So timer's up. We're going to set up our teeth. We're not going to teach you how to design stuff. Um, that's a whole other lesson. But you just spent an hour. You just spent four hours designing this teeth. You sent screen captures to the doctor. You sent them to the patient. Like everybody's giving their feedback. Great, everybody's in on it. It's a great case. It looks fantastic. Um, you can do that now because this is a temporary unprepared model or case. There's nothing going on. It's not saving anything except for a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of a little, a little wax on and wax off, and that's it. Okay. So you can close this order and open this order and send it to a friend and export it all day, every day. And you're never going to have a problem reopening it and redesigning it and doing it swiftly. No errors. There's nothing so to like, error. Out of that design tree, you give yourself all this flexibility. Well, so in the design tree, I have one, forget the first one. I have one, two, three, four, five, five. Yeah. Because exactly. you're not going to count creation and saving. I have five, not nine. And these are five simple ones, not nine complex ones. I'm not drawing a spliner on every tooth and then the spline can't intersect. Got it. it can't even get close or touch because then it throws in errors. Those are the temperamental things. So let's say I just used all my tools. Okay. And I, I'm done. I'm done with my wax up now. They do need to be touching because it's a, it's been bridged. I'm done with my wax up, right? It looks beautiful, right? Isn't that gorgeous? So we're going to hit next. I hope I get an air though. So most of the time it's funny, even when we do it my way. So it's just thinking right now. Not sure what it's thinking about. You do anything. Okay. Just sitting at one hundred percent. Do you get nervous when it does this? No, like, oh, it no. It's so it's what it was doing is it was finalizing. Okay. Now we don't have individual teeth. Now we have one big hunk of hunk of hunk of mesh, right? So that's when we go in here, and usually when we're actually doing things, we'll go in here with a smooth tool and just sort of do stuff like yeah. this, so we can yeah. get a nice a nice you know robust frame. But we're done now. Everything's one piece. That's the finalized step, right? Okay. So we hit next. We're done. That's it. So I'm gonna hit the timer now. Forget about the timer. That didn't really count. We didn't design anything, but we're pretending we did. Yeah. But we were in and out of there so fast. And the design tree and the operations are going to contain only individual transformations, global transformations, morphs, and, and sculpting. And that's it. There's nothing else going on in this case. We hit close. I guarantee you, uh, I bet you my life savings, you can open that case 100 times. As long as you don't go open a case from 1987, three shape, three yeah. shape two, you know, you're going to be fine. So, but now let's see what's inside this case. So we have new cases that weren't designed yet. And when you design a case and it's brand new, there's nothing in here, right? Okay. But we just finished designing the, the fresh diagnostic wax up. And we've got some stuff in there that we're going to, we're going to want to use. We've got our anatomy elements. Save that. Save it. It's never going anywhere. It's never going to get corrupt. You can reuse it. You can print it. You can mill it. You can do whatever you want. You can make a lot of stuff out of that. Hey, I've got a question. Uh, yes. Can you do gingiva wax up with temp on a prepared model? We are going, no, you cannot, but we're going to do it anyway. Oh, I like that answer. So that's the diagnostic wax up. And inside, we've got our anatomy elements. We all know about those now. We've got our scans. We have this folder called CAD Computer Design. And inside this CAD folder, is our anatomy elements as one piece. Okay. One little three shape DCM of our wax up. But we don't wanna use that one cause that's ugly. We're gonna use the one I did before. Okay. And we got our anatomy elements, but we've got our CAD file here for the patient who's, you know, forget about that. But this is what we've got because now we have a situation that we've set up to connect to some interfaces. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set the timer and in five minutes, less than five minutes, we're going to take this tampon prepare model wax up 
where we didn't draw 100 splines. We didn't do this or that. We're just going to connect to the, the interfaces real quick. And you can do that to print to 3D printed trine or whatnot or whatever. Um, and then we're going to do the bar real quick. Okay. Because I want you to see the other part before you see this part. But I want I do want to get to the bar. But this, this diagnostic wax up right here, where there is a gingiva on it, I'll show you how to do it real quick. I'm going to paste that there. And I'm going to hit redesign on my original wax up. Because it's all tampon prepared model, I'm not worried about hitting redesign. I'm not going to have a problem. Okay. And I am going to make changes. So let's jump forward. And one thing I don't like to do in any order is go up to the top of the process tree and click one of them where it jumps forward for you. That's usually not something I do, especially in a big old case. But in a diagnostic wax up, I don't have any problems with it at all. So we're going to do it. Okay. And now it's going to automatically sit back, relax. It's going to sort of jump ahead because we already did everything, isn't it? Yeah, it's going. It's thinking. Why are there new? That's weird. So something's wrong. But that's, there were like, three shape users are right now are going, yeah, you hit redesign. Why did you have to put more annotations again? And it is kind of strange. But I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't see it. Hey, and while, before we move too much further, what's your method yeah. for converting that design in DCM to an STL file? We'll do that. Okay. So my original, is this, did I open the wrong order? This is my original diagnostic wax up. Did I delete? Oh, because I, yeah, because I deleted, because I didn't want you guys to get confused. I deleted the anatomy for reuse that was already in there because I didn't want to get confused and it didn't need to be in there. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that... <laughs> The one we just did came up. That doesn't make any sense. So this is what we'll do. Cancel. While the order's, no, we'll, we'll close the order. Close the order. I want to show you how it's not too late to do these things. Okay. We already started designing, but now I'm going to close the order. I'm going to hit explore. I even It's even closed. But I'm going to take these anatomy elements. I'm going to rename this folder. Anatomy for reuse. Okay. Sometimes I spell it wrong and I screw myself and I don't have to go back and do it again. <laughs> and I'm going to paste it into my diagnostic wax up order. Even though I've already started designing, I'm going to hit design. Redesign. Yeah, I wonder why uh, my original design just disappeared. I shouldn't have messed with that order. I knew I shouldn't have. I didn't want anybody to be confused why the folder was already in there. And I wanted to paste it. Let's jump ahead. So these are the steps. Trimming, trimming, trimming. These aren't complicated. I know people have issues, but it's usually for different reasons. Okay. Um, so there's all our annotations, whatever. We're going to skip. So it's going to jump right to our teeth again. Yeah, it's because that's weird. I'm glad you had that problem. Like, but I, Well, I've never had that problem. So now that I'm yeah. thinking about it, it's kind of strange. I know like Min is watching. He's going, yeah, it, it, but the order was designed. That's the thing. If the order was not designed... In the, in the If the order was not in the design state, but was still in the created and scan state, it would make sense. But because it was already designed, it's weird that it did that. It's weird. It's actually, it's actually I'm going to think about that and use it. So we have this, but how do we get this gingiva here, right? Because we're not allowed to choose a gingiva on a tampon prepared model order. I've been asking for that since I was born. And uh, if Three Shapes watching, and I know they are, they'll see this. Please, come on. What are you afraid of? Who are you protecting? Just make it so that when I click gingiva, when I have all tampon prepared model, it doesn't say no. That's it. Anyway. Oh, you're still Let's... getting heckled, by the way. I love this. You've been heckled officially more than any other guest that we've had. We can go over those. You can send me the chat. I'll go visit some people's houses. Maybe it's because you're the first American, by the way, that I've had on this show. Everybody else has been in Europe, right? And we suck. So all the audience sucks. <laughs> They're much politer, you know? Yeah, the Europeans are super polite. That's what it is. Yeah. You're getting heckled because you're American. <laughs> well, we're better looking, so. <clears throat> Ooh, no. So we've got our diagnostic wax up order, right? I jumped right in I to, to redesign. Um, how did I get this tooth right here? I'm sorry, this gingiva. So I'm going to reset this design. You could see reuse designs down here. Now, this will pop up in your smile design, choosing a smile design. Anytime you paste that folder into the directory of that order. As long as you close your order and open it again, that smile library will be available. Now, does it have to be for that patient? No. That could be some full mouth diagnostic wax up you spent eight hours on last year. It looks so good. 
Yeah. And when you saw this new case, you're like, oh, this is perfect. Square but worn down teeth. Like I have that one and you can reuse it here. You're going to have to kind of move it into position because it's not going to be exactly the same anymore. But you'll have to just grab your global transform and move them all at once. Now, let's pretend I'm going to grab these uh, absolutely wonderful fab library Annette teeth. Come on, baby. Do you talk to your three shape a lot like that? Uh, <laughs> some days. <laughs> I'm, either, I'm either not talking to it because everything's fine or I'm yelling at it. I think I'd be verbally abusive to it if I. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, it's my fault. I didn't hit okay. <laughs> Literally, one shot will do that. I'm just not a drinker. <laughs> so we lost our teeth because we choose a different library. So, real quick, let's pretend we are going to start over again and let's get a gingival on these temp, on, temp pontics. So, there's multiple ways we could do it. There's three ways that I'm sure of. And you'll notice there's, a, there's an extra tooth on this order. Yeah. Nobody mentioned that molar over there. Nobody was like, hey, Mark, you idiot. You selected an extra tooth. Nobody nobody called you out. No. So that extra tooth is the gingiva. There's three hey, ways before we can you make move it the further, gingiva. one more question. Where did you get the Outcat abutment libraries? Uh, I'll tell you if you just hold on, people. Okay. Sonia, so, um, coming, Sonia. So... Let's pretend that that was beautiful and what we wanted. But we've got this extra molar over here, right? So I can make that a gingiva three ways. I can go over here and grab an attachment uh, that I made and you can get places and stuff. Where is it? Ooh, not on this computer? No, decadent. Decadent gingiva. I'm gonna do it by view direction. And now I've got this attachment here, this big blue ugly thing, right? Okay. And I've got that extra molar is my active tooth. So I'm just gonna slap that on there real quick. <clears throat> Let's uh, just put it right there. And I'm just gonna hit the fast forward, apply all placed attachments. I'm gonna hit play. And instead of adding like a precision attachment to my tooth or a cylinder or something, I added this whole big hunk of gingiva. And now my tooth is a gingiva. I can turn it around, morph it, squish it into place, right? Mm. So Tay's looking at this going, Wow. But if she was a three-shape user, she would know that normally you have to draw a spline all the way around. Okay. Don't go through any holes or tunnels. Then so it's draw a curious process that you just made really simple. A temper, a very temperamental process and not okay. perfect in any okay. way. This okay. isn't perfect either, but it's just not perfect. Um, and draw a spline around each implant site or tooth site or whatever. And then they can't be touching. Okay. And they can't be too close, but they can be too far, and they can't be in holes and tunnels. They can't be anything like that. You press play, and you hope, okay, good, you got tissue. And then you sculpt it, but it builds the tissue, and you still have – tissue takes a long time. It takes a long time to sculpt because this is a little tiny tooth. And when I grab these tools for sculpting, and I go to, like, let's say add this. Let's add a little add a little something here. You know, it's crazy. It's powerful, right? It's too yeah. much. But on this, you know – it's so big, you just sit here all day, all day. Okay. So it's not fun. Okay. So that's one way to do it. So if you don't want to use an attachment for your library, we can go back. But you see, this is what you can't do in Exacad. You don't have an art brush tool. You do not have an art brush tool for your art. So as soon as you close your scrapbook or your doodle book, in you can't make any changes. That's it. Yeah. But it's nice to be able to go back into the tree um, and go to attachment, add new, and click. And it's going to take us back in time. Okay. Um, it didn't, you know, we could do that in ExoCAD, but as soon as you, as far as what I've been told, because I'm not an ExoCAD user, yeah, is that it saves scenes and when it's closed, it's closed. It doesn't save the design tree. So I'm okay. assuming that you can't do that unless it's the first time around. Now, hey, let's we, add, have like, we have like 20 more minutes, by the way, just FYI. Let's see. Because you and I said, like, if we don't make it all the way through this, we might have to do two episodes. I mean, we have 20 minutes. We can have 30 minutes if we wanted. There's no hard stop. But just kind of give you. I bet you I can turn a diagnostic wax up into a screw retained implant bridge in like five minutes. But we want to do the bar thing, too, for thimbles. We haven't got the thimbles yes. yet. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go. So, but we have to have our diagnostic plan. Okay. So that's one way to make a gingerbread. Another way is to have it in the library. So just like going to the smile library, we can choose a library. We're gonna grab a single solitary tooth down here all the way at the bottom, single tooth. 
And because we have tooth number five, whatever, three, whatever, as our active tooth over here, it's only going to affect that tooth. And we're going to go, you see, see, I already designed it. We're going to go all the way to the bottom here. It's not in here. Oh, the, oh, no, the easy abutments. I thought I had the easy Geneva. Oh, it's because it's a different tooth. Sorry. Number one or 18 or whatever. Right. And we also so have go to a question. Somebody's asking, Angelica's asking. Oh, hey, Angelica. She's asking, how do you create the attachment gum option? I don't know if we already we'll, passed that. We'll get there. Okay. <clears throat> so now instead of using an attachment, we can use a tooth. This one's called OutCAD's Easy Gum. So we're going to select OutCAD's Easy Gum. We're going to hit OK. OutCAD Dental. Um, and now tooth number 15 is still a tooth. But that tooth model is actually a library um, mass like this, and it's actually textured. Uh, well, it should be. Oh, wow. The new one's textured. I'm sorry. So now we can take tooth number 15 and put it into its place instead of building everything up. And then we can go in there, obviously, with our tools and start cleaning things up and making a gingiva, right? So those are two ways to just get a quick gingiva. What I'm going to do. <clears throat> is grab the one I already used. So I have to go back to that being the actual tooth that it is um, and hit reuse design. All right. So we get our original design back. We finish our diagnostic. Those are two ways to add the gingiva. Another way is you could choose a single like coping tooth. Um, and fake it, and that'll let you choose gingiva, but then you're drawing splines and everything. So either use an attachment or the library from OutCAD, and you have a gingiva ready to go. Um, and there's one that's all textured and colored. This is, order is all messed up because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So let's do the five minute one, and then we'll do um, the bar real quick. Okay. So five minute design. Now, when you scan, when you create a case, doesn't matter where the implants are. I just know that I have six of them. So I'm just going to choose six teeth and I'm going to choose the library that I'm you know, using. When I go scan it, <clears throat> how many viewers do we have? 73 is the same amount you asked me last time. That's great. You guys are hanging in there. Who wants to do eight hour lesson? No, not me, man. Not me. <laughs> So we scan it, right? We jump in here and we scan it. These are the same case. We align each scan body. These are biohorizons. They were the multi-unit. So biohorizons is very clever. They're wonderful. They're my favorite. You know, when the doctor buys a multi-unit abutment, it comes with a cover cap. Well, it's also okay. a scan body. Oh. The snap, the snap abutment, like they're very clever in that. So we align everything. We get it all done. It's all scanned in and scan it dental. And we close what we get. is we get a scan, the preparation scan. You should be able to see them in here. <clears throat> Guess not. This is our new, our new preparation scan, right? And if you look, the DCM has implant coordinates in it. So now we don't have to scan it ever again, right? We're gonna take that file, we're gonna save it with the patient's information. We'll call it the upper edentulus with implant coordinates. That's all we need to know. But we need to remember we did six, there's six implants, that's all that matters. And we did six through 11. <clears throat> we also have our diagnostic wax up that we did, right? So these two things, well, that's a different diagnostic, but whoop, real quick, timer's not going right. Mm -mm. I don't see the timer. No. Okay. So we have that. We need two things, our diagnostic wax up and the arch that we just created that has implant coordinates. And we'll do this real quick. Five minute bridge. And we're going to choose those same exact sites. We're going to choose our implant connection. Let's just go direct, but to be familiar with everybody, let's just choose the desk multi-unit direct. So we can print like a try-in before we build the bar, make sure everything looks good. 
let's grab a pecton for fun. <clears throat> it's what's in a name, you know, it's just, it's a, don't worry about it. You could choose your printed material, whatever. Um, and we're going to hit bridge. Oh, sorry. We're supposed to choose wax up. So you see this order. I'll do it again. because it's that fast. Here's your order. You have two things, your diagnostic wax up and your implant arch. One to there. Grab your wax up, this last one, the blue one, and hit bridge. That's it. That's your order. That's all you do. This okay. order will we'll turn that into your prosthetic in five minutes, and we're going to do that. But we're just going to go make sure it's a model because then it's going to ask you to draw splines and stuff. When you trim the impression, you don't want to do that. Just grab model. You won't need your antagonist, and you have to choose section. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. But you don't even need your antagonist. You set all that up in your diagnostic wax up order that you spent, you know, eight hours on. Yeah. Um, so this is our five minute bridge. That's it. If anybody's confused, it's simple. Choose this little last blue one for each tooth that has an implant. Choose your implant system and hit bridge. It turns into wax up bridge and press OK. This isn't my creation. This is Prashemic. Everybody knows Prashemic. When you showed me this two years ago, I haven't done it any other way since. This is how I do it now. Uh, so we're going to, it's going to ask you to do two things. It's going to import two things. It's going to ask you to import your open, your preparation scan. That's going to be our upper edentialist that has those implant coordinates now because it came from our scan, scan case. We're going to hit open and it's going to ask for our diagnostic wax up. And I think on the desktop I had it. I think that's it. Now watch what happens. I'm going to hit open. Okay, it didn't give me that error. If you get the error that says your file's encrypted, it's a DCM that's encrypted from your CAD folder. You just have to turn it into an STL real quick. How to do that within 3Shape? Well, uh, if you have the- something, That's something that somebody asked also. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you want to convert a DCM to a, a STL in 3Shape, you have to have a license for it because you have to be able to import and export STLs, obviously, and that's part of your license. But this case right here, if I wanted to import that DCM arch that I just made, advanced export scan, and if you have the license for it in the drop-down menu, you'll be able to choose STL. If you don't have the license for it, you can't. And then you gotta go to other software. Um, if you're curious, you know, just let me know, I'll tell you what else you can use. But then you can grab STL file and export it, and you're good to go. Um, it'll export both of them. That's it. But if you don't have the license for it, there's other ways. If you don't know how to convert a DCM to an STL by now, you're not ready for this lesson. So we, uh, that's all we did is we, oh, is this not lined up? Yeah, that's, that's great. So five minute bridge. I'm going to hit, I finally did something wrong. Reset created that sets it back to created state. Now it's just created. It's back before you scanned it and everything. So we're going to import our scan again. So we're gonna grab our preparation arch, the right one. Where's Annex Dent? Annex School. Upper Edentialist with implant coordinates, good. I don't wanna use the one I already did extra. Is it in here? Hey, and while you're looking for that, Sam yeah. Lee is mentioning that the lock and unlock of the export STL feature, you can call your reseller of 3Shape and they can maybe enable it for you. So that's what he's mentioning. I might not call 3Shape, I might just email the you know upper level management. So I don't know where I am. So our diagnostic wax up, did I screw it all up? No, it did. we didn't save the CAD. So this should be our CAD. That's our CAD. Why is it uh, not aligned anymore? Interesting, it's not aligned anymore. That's fun. This is so unpredictable. I don't know how yeah. you deal with well, there's it. a lot of problem solving. Yeah, definitely. We're going to do the five minute thing and it's, where's the timer at now? Well, I didn't start it yet. <clears throat> okay, so let me just search the pet guy. Yeah. So we had our original diagnostic wax up. And we had our CAD from our original diagnostic wax up, right? That's all we need. But why is my CAD file with implant coordinates? So wrong, because it shouldn't be. Totally wrong. Hmm. So it's fine, I can fix it and, and they'll learn too. Um, so I'll show you guys what the problem is.
our our scan with the implant coordinates is not aligned to everything. So how do we align everything? And you're gonna do this when you're cross mounting all your stuff, all your large cases. If you go over here and you look over here on my uh, manager, you receive results for utility. And what that is, is I typed in utility over here and then I hit save. So no matter what, that'll always just be there like a little custom button. I just learned that the other day, I think from Min. So I have utility tools and I have an alignment tool. I have all these different tools for different reasons and we, we'll, we'll get to them, but so I don't have to create a, an order every time I need to do something. So let's jump into this order. All it is is a single temper and prepared model tooth number eight. We're not designing anything. There are tools available to us, but they're only available within dental system design. And we're gonna access those tools right now by creating a fake order and jumping forward. Just a fake little course. Uh, three shape users are laughing right now. I don't wanna create a spline. <laughs> oh. I can't even see anything. All right, we don't have to. We don't have to go for it. We can do it now. So, additional scans tool. We just jump right into a fake order. That's nothing. Look at this additional scans tool over here. This is the little purple tooth with the magic wand, and we've got load, align, and save. See this save option? That's um, that's the most amazing thing that's ever happened to Three Shapes since forever. So, I have a bunch of old stuff loaded from working on other stuff and getting it aligned. I'm going to delete it real fast because we only need. Yeah, we have enough room. So I'm actually going to turn these all off. So we have a blank piece of paper. We're in an order, so we have access to this tool. Now let's use this tool. Forget about the order. We just want this tool, that's it. Let's load some stuff. So we're gonna go to the desktop and we're gonna go to Annex School and we're gonna grab our Edentulous Arch with coordinates that's not aligned correctly. And we're gonna loan the original Edentulous Arch. And now it is, uh, apparent that they're not correct, but we want to make this arch. So we'll grab our arch with this and we'll align it to the original again. Using this new tool. Remember, so this is, you know, not working out for us. So we're just jumping in here to realign this to our original data. Just the same as if the doctor sent us a new impression. Yeah. We don't want to redo everything. We want to align the new stuff to the old stuff so old we can stuff. keep reusing all the other stuff that we built. So we'll grab three points, selection, whatever you like. Um, it's the exact same surface data. So it should align 99.999 to infinity percent correct. Okay. I'm no mathematician. <clears throat> That's pretty accurate. It is, right? Yeah. But I mean, is it good enough for like, if I told you um, push this button, you can be rich forever, but there's like that 0.0001% chance that you'll be, you know, blind or something. I'd go blind. I don't know. I would be the blind mm -hmm. person. So let me just grab three points real quick. They don't even have to be perfect because they're the same. And I apologize for screwing everything up for you. We'll hit a line, they'll align, but now we have this option yeah, but these are the problem um, to have. save. These are real life problems, so it's good. So now we'll, we'll, we'll save that arch. All right. So now we've moved there, we can, we can save it. Uh, okay. Where are we going? I'm gonna save it right on the desktop as new, just so we don't get uh, confused. And the nice thing about this is you can hit no, I'm not gonna um, save my design so it doesn't use up cat points if that's what you're doing. If all you wanna do is align something real quick. If you want to just align something real quick, you don't have to spend CAD points. If you make one order and save it as a utility alignment order and keep reusing that one every time you do something. So let's double check. Yeah, I'm not going to double check. We're good. So now that I fixed it, let's start over again. And we'll build this bridge in five minutes um, for Shemek's way. I think I just closed three shape, but that's fine. We'll start over. Things are getting crazy. We have 10 minutes, so it's perfect. Then you guys will come back and we'll we'll do bars on part two. I'm sorry you guys asked too many questions. <laughs> it's all their fault. Yeah, um, five minute bridge. We reset it. Remember, I just did the wax up thing, um, and we're gonna do the bar as a wax up bridge too. So you might be able to. They might be able to use their imagination. So um, import our scans. No, I don't want to use what I imported before. We're gonna go to the desktop, and we're gonna grab that new one, right? 
Hey, Mark, can I ask you yeah. real quick? Uh, One second, and then we're going to use the original that we, the wax up that we did. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I know that we kind of gave this hypothetical stopping point in about 10 minutes, but if we get to the end of that 10 minutes, do you want to take a survey on if people want to keep going for a little bit longer to finish or do we have too much? Like a survey to see if people actually want to learn about thimble bridges? I know they're all going to say yes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm down. Just let me know. Okay, let's get let's get done, and then we'll see what people still. Maybe we can do it Monday or Tuesday or Friday. Whatever you got, Friday. But uh, okay. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna hit the timer, and in less than five minutes, I'll have an implant bridge, beautiful implant bridge from my diagnostic wax up. We got skipped it. over all kinds of splines and dots and clicks. Yeah, we skipped all over it thanks to Prashemic, um, for showing me that a few years ago, and. When we do the bar with thimbles, it's gonna be the same exact thing. The entire bar is gonna be a diagnostic wax up. The entire thimble is gonna be a diagnostic wax up. It's all gonna be one and we're gonna do the same thing with the bar. So five minute bridge, everything's imported. Hit the timer, let's hit, oh, we'll hit next is fine too. All right, how fast can we take a very simple machine like a temporary unprepared model order, CAD file and connect to implants? People are already saying, yes, we should just keep going. Yeah. Okay. So one thing, one thing you want to do is you want to clean these up. Three Shape does not like it when these are super gingival. This connection right here, there's going to be a, an interface, and there's going to – forget about the five minutes because now I'm talking, but let's, let's do it real quick. Forget about the little temperaments because this isn't perfect yet. But my implants are there. We're going to mark them. It doesn't matter because we're doing a wax-up bridge. You can put them wherever you want. Insertion direction. Let's see. Do we get an error? No. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely. Let's go for speed on this one because we can do it again if we're doing it for speed. Yeah, I do it for speed, and then if people have questions, they can post it. The questions, and we can do them again. Oh, take a shot. That was an error. So, when you get errors that pop up, they don't mean anything. They're not always critical. Most of them aren't. All so right. So I like to look at it. <clears throat> well, three shape users right now are looking at their screen going, what the hell is that? Because that's the first thing that I said when I saw this. I'm like, what the hell is that? Are you kidding me right now? Because I already know what I'm seeing. And I'm just like, man, so easy. So three shape users, this is your next step. You're going to just double check these, these splines that the, the software drew. If you can't see them, let's just go a little translucent or whatever. Um, I don't even know where this one is. I don't even see it. So let's... Uh, Something's wrong. Something's not on. Let's hit reactivate that one. All right, there we go. So it doesn't always get them right because you can see where's it going to draw over here. Yeah. But these are little things that I wanted to fix a second ago, but I was like, no, let's go for speed. And um, who's knocking on that door? Be like, I'm on. I'm in. I'm on the air. I shouldn't have hit next. I was supposed to check them all. Probably screwed myself for those five minutes. Anyway, you would hit next, next, or these little uh, active cut spline wax up. You would hit that and just make sure everyone's a nice circle, looking good. And then the computer freezes for about 10 seconds. Okay, good. So it didn't, it didn't screw up on me. It let me know that I need to finish what I was doing here. Okay. So let's keep clicking forward. Looks good. Looks good. You used to have to draw all these splines on the model manually. But now if you set everything up real nice, ah, that's not going to work for us. Man. So there's one that it doesn't like, and you would go back and modify the wax up. And it's that one right there, um, the, the middle one, uh, which is number what, nine? Because it doesn't have the material there. What a fail. What a major fail. I know people out there right now are like, oh, they're so happy. Because that's the thing. We watch these, uh, you go to Instagram, you go to this, you go to that, and you're like, oh, man, how did they do that? And people, yeah, everything's so perfect. So when we're watching a webinar and people are actually having problems, which I am right now, because it's going to pop up uh, again, it's not going to go, it's not going to move forward. Um, and I know that. Uh, they enjoy it because it's like, okay, I'm not the only one. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm telling you right now, if, if it did move forward because tooth number nine and that insertion path, there isn't blue, so it's going down. It doesn't, it's giving me an issue. Um, we would pretty much hit next. All of the implants would connect at once. Tay, you might not care, but if you're a three shape user, you're gonna be like, seriously, all at once, just once, just boom. Um, you clean up around them, you hit next, you see your screw channels, you hit next and you hit close and that's it. 
And where are we at? Three. We still have time. Let's see. Probably not, though, because when that air pops up at this stage, what happens is I start accessing all of them except for that one, and it won't let me edit it or an even, it won't initialize it. So I'll go back and I'll make sure ahead of time. And I want to make sure ahead of time that the junction between, so the margin on your tie base, that junction, it needs to be below the surface data of your intraoral scan or your model scan. And it needs to be outside the surface of this blue surface here. Um, if they're, and it's, it's, it shouldn't be that way. It sounds crazy. It's like, what are you talking about? Blue it. Yeah, I know. Maybe you didn't notice. I did, but it sucks. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. They should have no bearing on that connection. But when they're not that way, that's when we go click sculpt on protective surfaces and go start to sculpt around there. And those triangles just start going all over the place and getting all messy because those surfaces are intersecting. But if they're not, everything's good. So this isn't going to move forward. Um, <laughs> I think we should end it on a control delete, but we're going to go with Samantha control shift escape. Everybody learned a fantastic thing today. Control shift escape. Yeah. <laughs> we here all week. Um, yeah, that's, so this is the software. Um, you know, I scream at it. I have, you know, I have bad days and good days and I have sometimes it's a really bad day and it's usually, you know, the, the way the case was prepared before it was even mm -hmm. provided to the now, lab. At, at this point, can we go back and fix what's tying it up so, yeah. can, so you can continue? Yeah. Let's do that. Cause I think everybody's pretty much in it to stay for a little bit longer. So we're going to close that real quick. We just need to go okay. fix our diagnostic wax up a little bit. Okay. We're not going to go with the fresh. Where are we at? We're going to go back to Barry Peck. Barry is long for bar. Now, let's see how long it takes to modify our, our wax up as a tampon prepare model. This is a design case. How long will it take to get right to the tooth without any errors and start designing and modifying our order? Samantha says she's going to be giving a webinar on keyboard shortcuts next week. <laughs> it was less than it was less than 14 seconds. We were in our order and designing, right? Okay. <clears throat> oh, she's going to do um, control shift escape webinars. Yeah, hold on. Oh, good. It. <laughs> well, there's other things too. Like I just learned that when you're typing in your iPhone, if you hold the space bar, you can scroll your cursor. Oh, like, that's cool. Oh, it's, it's, are you, so it's cool. It's like the most amazing thing ever compared to you know what we usually do. <laughs> So we have our wax up, right? Okay. Now, if we were in the finalized step, hell, no. But if we wanted to, we could save every element. Do you see that right over on the right side of the screen? We could save every little bit now. So but imagine you know, now you know, like coming back to this point now, you know what the problem was. So we're going to focus on that problem. Yeah. Fix it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But while you're designing, if you think you're going to have a problem, like you hit next and everything's starting to crash, if you really spend a lot of time, you can go back one and sort of use this new tool to sit here and, you know, save at least some of it somehow, little bits and bits. But anyway, let's move forward and hit next. We're just going to get to the finalized stage where it's all one piece. And we're just going to bring that out a little bit so that it, the, uh, so you have, there's meshes within the software that you don't see. Okay. You don't need to see them. We have our visual 3D models and our utility 3D models. And with implants, there's two utility models that we use. One is the like subtractive normals of the interface, where to cut and the subtractive normals, what I was telling you about earlier with the implant yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of the implant. So it cuts away at your model, whatever. Um, so we're in finalize. This is our whole object is one piece, right? Mm -hmm. But let's, um, let's take a look at those implant sites. Which one? It was over this one. So I know that I'm going to have a tie base that's going to have a little collar on it sticking out and whatnot. And I want to, you know, have all that ready to go. Do you remember which one was messed up? Yeah, I think it was. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I don't want to do. And we're just going to do it the way. Because you're probably wondering, like, why are these dips in here? Well, I'm going to show everybody. So the software was just saying you didn't have enough. There was just something it didn't like. And, okay. and, and it's, 
it's one of those things where you just go back and change one small thing. Yeah. And it might fix it, but it might not. So you so go back and you one, change a whole bunch of small things. Was. That's the one where the problem was. It was right. one of these, but I think it's just, um, it's not normal to have these dips and stuff. Okay. Our super gingival connections. Yeah. I didn't want the surface intersecting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking about that and you skipped on because you wanted to save some time. Now I remember. Well, three shape users know that like around when you hit sculpt on protected surfaces and those areas just around your implant interfaces, well, your uh, tie bases and stuff, mm -hmm. they don't sculpt well. They don't okay. sculpt well at all. And we'll, we're going to see that now. But if you keep them from intersecting the surfaces, then they do sculpt very, very well. And I found that one day, I think, like, middle of COVID. So let me just make sure. That we're going to be outside these zones. Let's just stick it out. That one's definitely out. Pretty sure that's out. And the other thing is, like, nobody showed me this, this part. Yeah. You have to figure these things out. So maybe there's an easier way. If there is, tell me, you know. Samantha, yeah, I'm kind of watching the comments. Control so shift. Everybody came nope. on and said something, but nobody yet. Everybody's just listening. Well, it's because they don't know, and I don't know, and we don't know what we're doing. Nobody we're figuring it out. Well, that's the thing um, that we're not going to have time to see today is not doing it three shapes way. And you're taking back, you know, that design tree up there that just systematically tells you this is what you have to do next. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah. And saying, hey, I'm a human. I can make informed decisions. I don't need you to give me to a ticket. Force you down the path. The street. I can look both ways. There were no cars. I yeah. shouldn't have to pay a fine. And that's pretty much, you know, how I feel with a lot of things, not just the software, but, you know, uh, what do we got here? I don't know. I should be able to take this apart and fix it, but I'm sure I can't. Your, uh... All right, so let's let's be done with that. Um, it's incorrect, but we should be good. Okay. We're going to hit close again. We're going to grab that new CAD file. Um, the right to repair. Right to repair isn't just for, you know, the iPhone people, iPhone repair. It's for everybody. It's for this right here, John Deere tractors, all that stuff. But what goes along with it is also they're speaking about software as well. If you buy a software, you own it. And but we have, you know... Whatever, we're medical. Whatever. So I'm not sure. I'm just going to generate a cam output just in case it doesn't replace us in the cat file. It will. Um, I don't know. We're all medical. We got, we have rules in place to protect us and protect our customers and patients and clients and everybody's protected. But sometimes they just don't protect us the way they're supposed to. They just make things worse. And anyway, explore order. We've got that CAD, right? So this is the mm -hmm. modified one. We got one right there, so I'm just going to drop it on the desktop. I'm going to replace it. <clears throat> All right. Five-minute wax up. Try again. Reset back to created. So it goes back to the created state so we can re-import this new stuff. Okay. Right, right click import. Do I want to use the existing preparation scan? Yes, because there was no problem with it. Do I want to use the existing other thing that had a problem with it? No. So it's going to let me choose another one. And we're gonna choose that same one I just overread. All right, so six minutes to fix it. Still better than, you know. All right, reset the timer. Design. All right, I'm gonna click next, 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 because you guys already saw. Um, I do apologize for not being able to. My webinars always go like this. I don't know why. Maybe somebody could tell me. They they run over. Not over too over. much. <laughs> well, there's so many little things. I know, I know. I just so badly want to see the thimble frame man before we go today like i need to see it we can okay we can because this is fine i could i could already see it right now it's fine and i never got to drink alcohol on a you know well i was just about to say I, we're not I, okay I, so there's, a, there's an issue going on in here and which tooth is it sorry guys so this, okay, so this one's fine. And that one's just not visible. And that's going to be whatever. Let's fix this one. 
So I've I've never had that pop up before and it not be critical at this stage. I always had to modify something. Uh-huh. And I'm hoping there's someone out, you know, I wonder if Prashamik's watching be like, no, 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 no. Like, cause he showed me this and I've I've looked at these, uh, where is it? The active connector plane before. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, don't even worry about it. I'm like, ah, I'm not gonna. Cause I clicked on it and it was, it made no sense. All right. So <clears throat> all but whatever, I wasn't even paying attention. Sorry guys. One of these it does not like. One of these is intersecting other meshes and whatnot. Normal, so this is, uh, I'd say, one in 10 times it happens. Problem is, I already did this yesterday. So I had everything done. This is like an old thing that was like from like a yeah, yeah. private lesson. So you um, can't really easily determine where the error is. Not while talking and yeah. watching stuff. It really throws me off. I have a zone. Um, but yeah, I would, I would just probably go back and pay better attention to it. So if you wanted to see a bar though, let's do that. Okay. Let's do a bar as fast as we can. How about that? Sounds good. Okay. Control shift escape. I will never hit control delete again for as long as I live because I really have no interest in like logging out and stuff like that. So you guys want to build a bridge as fast as you can for a thimble bridge and that's what we're gonna do. We have a diagnostic wax up. We have a preparation arch that has implants in it. Let's do it real quick. Okay. There's, But there was multiple ways to do it, but we're just gonna do it, uh, we'll do it the outcad way. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, we had these six implants. Let's pretend these are six implants. And we're gonna go with, where are you? You guys can grab whatever you're working with. It doesn't matter. Let's grab a bar and let's go with the decadent bar. It's just a profile that I've been working on because I don't know what I'm doing, but I had to figure it out on my own because I asked uh, a lot of people on 3Shape, like, what are these thingies here? And it didn't work out. So uh, model section, say OK. You would bring in your diagnostic wax up. You would bring in your antagonist. You'd bring everything in, but we're just going to do a quick one and pretend that we can see the, the diagnostic wax up. So we're going to import our arch. <clears throat> now we want the new one, don't we? Like I, I had plans for you guys, um, but we just didn't even, weren't able to get to it but it involved, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. So fast bar design. So I remember whenever we were early in the process of trying to help some of our customers figure out how to do this, they said that they needed DME files for prep designs. And I, there were, it was really complicated in three shapes. Well, it was complicated. And then... We started building preps as attachments. Okay. And then Audrey Gerald took those attachments and made them a smile library. And we're all like, ah, that's clever. Okay. Then Bobby took it another level and put the annotations for, you know, the anatomical features of the teeth in a specific arrangement that I was just like, all right, I would have done that. That's, that's nice. And they so do all three really shape well. users have access to that? Like, is Absolutely do not. Um, oh. You either create it yourself you get it from a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, you can marry into it. You know, if your wife knows how to create thimble libraries, maybe you should marry that woman. Um, or you go online and you can purchase them. Um, so this is OutCAD. I believe it was like 50 bucks. Oh, okay. Um, it's, okay well, it's the, bucks. it's the best one there there is. Okay. Right now. So while we're doing this, let me just load the diagnostics so we can pretend that we're, you know, doing this, this fast way. I'm just going to put a comment on, um, I'm going to put a comment on the feed that says OutCAD prep library. Is that what it's called? So let's uh, double check. Cause I don't want to give you the wrong. <clears throat> so Is OutCAD, yeah. everybody knows, knows OutCAD. So, <clears throat> Easy about sorry, easy abutments. That's so, perfect. I mean, this is the best one that there is, and they used to be like five hundred dollars and look stupid. 
but that was many, many years ago. Now they look great. They work great. And, you know, they don't cost anything from OutCAD. Um, and they'll support you with it, too. It's all a DME ready to install. So we've got our arch. We've got our diagnostic wax up where we're going to be building the teeth on, right? Jump forward. Let's choose our implant sites. Bada bing, bada boom. We still have to do a part two, though. Maybe I'll pre-record it and edit it so it's not long. Okay. What do you think, Alyssa? How are you doing over there? You just hanging out on your Facebook or anything? Watching you. Oh, you watching? Really? All right. So I have this bar profile. Still working on it. <clears throat> we would go through here and pretty much just eliminate these and try to get these all minimal. Okay. See, so it's going to say no. Um, get these all minimal. I wish there was, uh, you know, you can go in and build your, um, not bar profiles, but your like abutment profiles. Okay. And, and make one that's just, you know, minimal. So you get those out of the way. You've got your diagnostic wax up as a reference, like where you're going to put things. Okay. So right off the bat, you're going to have an insertion direction. So let's determine that now. <clears throat> And you're going to have your visual options. And we go down here to advanced. Where are we? That's not where I wanted to see. Oh, because we don't have the bar active. We have the, in the implants. So click the bar. All right, I got you. I got you. Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 3Shape. Thank you so much for those, those informative. So, <laughs> I, you know, as much as I love 3Shape, it does make me angry sometimes. And it's like, I don't need to be told six times. Like, I haven't even done anything yet. Relax, calm down, you know? So it's like when you're going to do something and then someone tells you to do it and you're like, well, I was just going to do it and I don't want to anymore. Yeah. So show occlusal plane. We're going to click on that. Now we can set the insertion direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can set the insertion direction based on this diagnostic wax up situation. So we can start rotating this bar. Okay. Thank <sighs> All right. I have to fix those before I do anything. This is so we're going to move this. So yeah. So set up your implant, whatever, your, your direction. Okay. I'm so out of my element and this computer is stupid. So now we can turn off show occlusal plane, start messing with this, uh, this bar profile. So we'll start getting everything. I think it's easier for me to just click, click for every tooth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's do that real quick. That makes if sense. anybody if anybody gets one of these and you're like I don't know what to do, one time somebody asked and we had a member of the Three Shape Study Group on Facebook with 28,000 members. Don't forget to sign up. Um, ask like what's going on here and somebody was like you're stupid. You just have to double click it. And we're like hey, I didn't know before. This used to happen. I'd be like what is going on? Where did it go? Just double click it. Oh wow. Okay. And then and then yeah. Well that's the thing. I didn't know. Nobody told me. Yeah. I didn't know I had to double click it. How am I, how would you know? And yeah. somebody, you know, was a jerk and was like, you're stupid. You should just double click <laughs> it. I'm like, come on everybody. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to move all these to a common plane uh, or not. Did I just accidentally delete it? That's not what I wanted. Forget it. <clears throat> Cause it's has to do with, I can't even, yeah, there's no undo. Thank you. three. Thank you. Three shape for not having an undo in your, um, Bar module. Thank you. It's still that thing. Appreciate it's if you're not looking good right now. Thank you. Thank you. Look at that. Well, I need this insertion axis. Yeah. Explain your, okay, three shape. <clears throat> Why does it keep doing that? Why can't it just hold on a freaking minute and wait for me to get to that point where I'm going to modify those cylinders instead of constantly reminding me? And they're going to say, Mark, go over here, click this and hit that and then well, I don't have update automatically on, so it shouldn't be happening. It should just leave me alone and give me a break and let me design. But it's still telling you. What it wants me to do. It... Hey, three shape. I know you want me to design those first, but I don't want to. You're making me really upset right now. <laughs> they are. No, no, no. I really am upset right now. Because if I was doing this, I'd be like, come on. Just give me, a, give me an undo every time I do something. 
So there's one comment, maybe this, I mean, this is going to make sense to you. It doesn't necessarily make sense to me that he said, I create a wax up by a denture module, mono denture, then align the export file with the model. I have a diagnostic wax up and make thimble. And that's his simple way. Have you ever done so it that way? Or? When I brought it in as a, in the denture module, everything looked good. I was like, all right, all right. And then my entire preparation arch, which uh -huh. was actually a scan of the bar, yeah. went, low, went low poly. And I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense because it's building like a denture. It doesn't need a super high def edentulous arch. Right, right. Um, so it saves like on bandwidth or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and all of a sudden my arch just went low poly, you know, distorted, you know, not as detailed. And I was like, well, I'm not doing that over a bar. I'm not milling zirconia bar, a zirconia frame over a bar. I'm sorry, a zirconia superstructure over a bar that just got all distorted. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to bother. But I can tell you the denture module, I don't, I don't, I don't really know it. Okay. So, but I know that people do it that way. I just don't know. I went and tried. Everything was looking good. I'm like, oh, yeah, because I finished. I got what I wanted. It was just not a fit. It was not going to fit ever. So pretend you got your bar real good. The reason I like this profile, whoop, we lined everything up. Everything looks good. We got our base. We could put the uh, the, the attachments and the abutments on it now. Um, but we want to mess with this profile a little bit. Okay. And we've got these points here, and we can hold shift. Now we can mess with the whole profile. Okay. Get things sub gingival. Get up, you know, it it depends on your preference. Get in here and do a little of this. Um, you have your you have your you have all your annotation points ready to just get this bar right where you want it. Um, but if you're doing pecton, you're not gonna want a bar like this. Right. You're gonna use the gingiva. But if you're doing a bar for different reasons, like if you're, it just depends on what you're building and why you'd want maybe the whole profile to see or not. But let's say this is what I wanted. This is what we were doing. You know, whether it was a wax. Of, I hope John Wilson's watching right now. <laughs> that bar module. You have to know the bar module well, and I'm not super. Um, I don't want to bother with those right now. <sighs> So we're gonna go in here. Now we've got these attachments. We would have our diagnostic wax up. Come on, baby. There you go. Okay. Boop -a doo Where are you? Did I not install them? That's funny. I have mine, but I don't have the outcad ones installed because I'm stupid. <laughs> but I definitely Isn't it funny, like you know, I it's, see why everybody it's Tay's so, fault. It's for, Tay's fault. My fault. I see yeah. why everybody gets so her webinar. with it because there are so many things that can go wrong and it's not really that clear on what where the problem really lies. Like there's a lot of problem solving on the by the individual user on every single case. Well, it's about foresight. All of it's foresight. If you know where you're going and what you're going to be doing and you know the software, you can plan ahead and be like, well, obviously that's not going to work. And you learn because you're like the last 20 times, 30 times, I 500, 10,000 times I did that, yeah. I had a problem. And so you're always doing things a little bit differently. So you would set these up, visualizing your um, diagnostic wax up. Okay. And, you know, you're going to hit play. You're going to append these. You're going to do it okay. better so that you don't, you know, obviously this isn't done. You'd start sculpting everything. Sure. But those abutments getting under here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, these so so mine are fine. I I, I like mine just fine. But what yeah. uh, Bobby and Hanley's did at Outcat is when you have a tooth and these aren't teeth, they did it as a library. So okay. we wouldn't even have loaded in. Oh, that's why, because I'm stupid. <sighs> Some negative self-talk, Mark. Well, no, well, it's uh, more of a like sarcastic because I'm smart. No, I'm just kidding. I knew somebody once that said, "Mark, I'm the smartest person I ever meet," and they were being serious. Ooh. And I'm just like, because they weren't smart. So, no. No. All right, watch this. You would do, remember, we we're going to do it as a diagnostic wax, but we couldn't get it to connect. Let's just do it real quick. I'm going to name this patient this, and we're going to do a diagnostic wax up real quick with an extra tooth. <laughs> Nobody's learning anything. We're going to do temp off repair model as a bridge. We're not going to have an antagonist. We're not going to have section. We don't care about that. We just need to make the thing real fast. And that's what we're going to do. What men? What do you want, men? Men, what do you he said, want? He said, I'm back. What I miss? 
All and right. for the record, um, I, we've got Michael saying, dude, you're brilliant, which I agree. Michael who? Michael Scherer. Oh, okay. Yeah, Michael's good. <laughs> Is he the person that told you that he was the smartest you've ever met? <laughs> so, Tay, do you remember um, Jim or who was it that um, introduced us, came to the lab that I was working at with your materials? Oh, Jim Renan. Jim Renan mm. from Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Well, I haven't talked to Jim in forever since the Jehovah's Witnesses um, sold the clock tower in Brooklyn, like right over there. Yeah. And um, so I don't know what he's up to, but he uh, said something, something annexed that. And we were over at Tech Squared in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And you sent you sent us a box of all kinds of stuff, right? Oh, my God. And then yeah, like Jim showed up and box. started flasking stuff and doing yeah. this. And then. I think the boss went and spent like five, six, seven thousand dollars on the like, kits. It was We're a all good set. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Shearer is uh, in the market for materials, and he keeps hearing about Annex Dent. And he's like, "Do you like? Why do you like?" Oh, he was the one I think he said, "Why do you like Annex Dent?" And I was like, "I don't care. I just like Annex Dent, the company." And Tay and everybody, you know, <laughs> small small private business. So yeah. Michael, if you want to write down Michael Shearer who made that comment, and you got to lead there. But I was asking him, I wonder if there's anybody in the California-ish area if you could send a box of goodies to. Would it be funny if Jim lived there now? Oh, I think You're he's like, near me there. in Texas. I think he's really? near me in Texas. Yeah, he, came, he had, got, took like a ministry position, he and his wife. So I think he just had a complete- Ooh, like, a ministry position. Career change, yeah. He's not in the lab anymore then. I don't think I, so. I don't imagine- he loved it though. He was good. He was. He was. He, I like. I like Jim a lot. Um, yeah, so sure. we're importing the new stuff, and we have. Where's? Yeah, that's it. That's all we're doing. We're doing bars of diagnostic wax up, and then you do the awesome um, Mark five minute bridge thing that doesn't work. We're gonna yeah, have to do Mark, this. Whole, where's the five no, minute bridge, Mark? We're gonna have to do this whole episode again. <laughs> I'm serious. But, okay, I'm down. Like, I'll do it. But I'll. What a disaster. It's so not, the, it's a learning experience. Why and that's you, the great the thing, thing is I know what I'm doing. Like it's just it's not happening today. Well, that's the great thing about this kind of learning format. If it doesn't go well, people didn't have to travel away from their homes. They're not out any cash. They are out some time, but they definitely learned while we were sitting here going through these errors. So it's not anything down the drain, and we can always meet up again. <laughs> well, you tried to do it really you good. Can't do it, Mark. But you know what? I, mean? like, what I think that's what's great about this learning format. We can learn from these and still continue on. I just wanted to plug my new book. <laughs> I don't have a book. Um, so let's pretend we're good. Uh, what are we building? We're doing a diagnostic wax up, but it's going to be a bar. Let me just get away from this library that's just all skewed and all over the place. Okay. Let me let me choose a library that might work well for a bar. Maybe okay. this one would work. You think this one would work? So we've got Outcats Easy Abutment Library. We got our diagnostic wax up of the full contour situation visualized. Let's pretend. But when you have this this library and you're going to position everything real nice, the problem with attachments, even though it works just fine, is even when you don't choose global position, but you choose to place them all individually and apply them at once, uh, they move. If you move one, they all move. So you have to put one down real nice where you want it and apply it before you can put any more. I don't know if it's like, that's how it was. And it's just a pain because maybe yeah. I just want to keep moving things around. So they're all, you know, right where I want them before I, before you I tell them to drop it. Individual adjustment. Yeah. You want to be like, yeah. so this is why this works wonderful. So let's position this right here. Everything looks great because I was able to go into OutCAD's whoop, bloop, <laughs> OutCAD's easy abutment okay. and choose the morph tool. And since these are teeth, look, come on, Bobby. He's so clever. When he did this, I was like, oh, you put those because you could put as many. Um, I believe these like they're the occlusal pit uh -huh. annotation points because there's only so many cusp tips. Right, yeah. so yeah, the yeah, software yeah. doesn't allow you to put all the points you want on the cusp tips, but with the um, the pits, whatever 
You could put as many, and I think that's what he used here. And now we can go in and actually oh, you, know, you can move diamond, every little bit. Oh, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Well, you could do it before with this tool, but now that we have points, we get it to visualize that symmetry a little bit more and get things right where we want them um, and get things, you know, just a little bit past. I guess it depends on your plan. Do you want your crowns locked in to your gingerva composites? Do you want your crowns to be not locked in in case something's an issue? It can just be removed and replaced. Because in a case like that, you'd probably build the gingiva before you finish your crowns. You know, you just put the crowns down, put some separating agent on them, some Vaseline or some divorce or some murder or whatever you're going to call it. I think the divorce is the funniest thing. It always reminds me of these candles that were scented. Uh, the name of the candle scent was called divorce papers. Um, so it still reminds me of the divorce papers candle. So, this is hysterical. No, but with this... Like, with this way, you can turn that into the bar design. You can turn those preps into the bar design. Well, you'd get these right where you want them. Yeah. So that when you build your crown over it, the margin level's right where you want it, a little sub G. Everything's ready to go. But we're going to do that tooth thing again where I grab that tooth. You go to the smile library. Hopefully, we get an error. <clears throat> it's too funny. You know, oh, we Andre gotta, sorry, we, Andre we do single tooth. Because he was going through a divorce at the time and he thought it was funny. <laughs> It, it, I, I saw that on the podcast too, and I was I was glad you guys brought it up. Um, but it was it was very funny. It was nice hearing those stories as well. So we got the things in place. We've got our extra tooth, and we just grabbed that easy that easy gum. Okay. So once we have our tooth, so that's the thing. What's in a tampon prepared model? It's just a name. Forget it. What does it do? It's just a free forming tooth, and we can do whatever we want as long as we know how to make a smile library out of objects like that Yoda body I was going to do. Yeah. That's all. Those are, so Yoda was a smile library. He was two teeth and it was just going to give you an example. So you would do this. Okay. Alexa, shut up. You would do this and you would set everything up real nice. Why, what did I say that sounded like Alexa? Why did she start speaking? Why are you laughing, Alyssa? You can laugh out loud. It's okay. This is a family show. It is a family. It's a family show. We hey, do all this, this right? Trying to make so this actually makes sense to me. Like this part makes well, sense to me. But so this is the other way. This is so. Remember the other way. The other where way where you set up all those tooth type indications and bridge. So yeah. you get in here, okay? Get in here. Obviously, this isn't going to work. You're going to do a better job, right? Let's just do one real nice the way I would, you know, do it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Get yeah. In here. We do have to do an episode two and we'll call it like where I don't take one shot and go off the deep end. Like, Man, uh, I didn't realize you were such a lightweight. I would never have said I don't know if it's lightweight or I just like get into it. Like, man, so hey, drunk, it's, it's man. It's really getting used to doing this live. Like it really, it, it, I don't know. It gives you, you have a lot of pressure, but this makes sense. Doing this live? Oh no. Yeah. When you're not doing this live and you're like actually just in your own element, you can think. Yeah, you can think. I mean, come on. Entering combo cases with all okay, these different implant systems in three shapes, and I you're trying to pay attention to the order, and the phone keeps ringing, in and everyone's yeah. bothering you, and Daddy, I need to use the bathroom, and you're like, shut up. So I, I had a question before um, from somebody who couldn't watch live today. I know they'd be asking right now. Yeah. Um, they are – not they weren't able in three shape to get the contours at this stage where they wanted them on the margins so they were milling it in the pecton and then they were taking by hand with a hand piece and carving it the way they wanted it finishing it with the hand piece and then double scanning so it, yeah. do you ever do that or do you is it possible to get the contours it, and the margins just how you want them using this easy abutment library so you can do whatever you want and get them however you want them i think it's also a pecton manufacturing issue they could have possibly been having because i know people don't understand how hard it is and so they just throw it in as pmma and then they have all these like fuzzies and flashes. oh yeah they don't slow down the spindle or yeah what's that material called let's say i worked in a plastic factory and i have to make mm -hmm. these all day there's a flash yeah you trim all the flash away um, and there's just flash everywhere. Yeah. And I, there's a few Facebook posts where I'm just like, 
Somebody's like, oh, look, Pecton. I'm looking at it. I'm like, that's not going to work. You're going to be revealing that. Um, but it's hard, but it's good that it's hard. Um, so you do that. You morph everything because we're going to do the crowns real fast. You cut some of this extra stuff off. So if you don't know how to use the slice tool, I know people that would slice and they're like, well, what do I do next? It just stays like this. Uh -huh. Just hit the slice tool again. I always thought that was funny. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I didn't know either until somebody told me. I was like, oh, that you took the slice That person again. would be me for sure. How, but how are you supposed to know? Why can't there be tiny little letters down there that just say, to, to apply, click slice tool again. So let's pretend this looks fabulous. This is what we want, right? Okay, okay. We want to build the crowns over it. Yes. Oh, uh, they got to be connected. So it's a bridge, but yeah, we have to go to the connectors real quick. That's one one drawback is we okay. do have to have connectors between each one because they do have to be touching. But okay. we don't want them touching. We'll, so we'll put connectors in there. Um, okay. That one's fine. We just got to go back in. That's just one of the little... So that's why I grabbed the, the six millimeter um, cylinder instead of like a whole profile silhouette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yes. necessary. Yeah, like this. I don't want that. Just something quick because I don't have to do anything. And it'd be nice. Oh, in the um, order form, I could have chose to make them all this thingy. But I yeah, and Tony Clark, where were you at the beginning of the episode telling us that we can't mix alcohol with three shape? It's too late, man. It's too late. But well, we didn't even do that. <laughs> All right, just for you guys, because it's fun. Well, I, I have this here. It's empty, that one. And this is Alyssa's half. Yeah, this okay. For, you good you guys. I might have put some in my coffee. But I'm not the designer, so whatever. It's I, fireball. I what is this even? 33? Is that, I don't know. I don't okay, know. I'm gonna stop is that good? Is that bad? I'm going to stop interrupting you. Like, because we're, we have nine more minutes before we're at two hours. Let's okay. wrap it up, B. But um, we have to re record the whole thing. I'm okay. glad that it didn't go well. And I hope, you know, it puts people at ease going, because, like, I'm not a master. I know there's a well, lot of people out there that go, master, master. It's such bullshit. Don't say master. There's no master. Just stop using the word master. What <laughs> happens is people just say, oh, you're the three-shape master. I never said I was. Yeah. So it's like, thank you. But this is reality. This is the truth. I'm not a master. I still I deal with the same crap you deal with, but maybe I just manage it better. Yeah. And then people invite me to be on their webinars. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh. That's not a good one. So the unable to combine models error. Mm -hmm. That's a bad one. Uh, not always, but most of the time, that's not a common one. That's new. Um, and that's a little bastard of an error. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we're going to get rid of the connector. Okay. We're going to say no. <clears throat> and we're going to go in here. I just want to see this one. Get rid of everything else. We're gonna grab this. We're gonna grab a piece of skin and we're gonna pinch it and we're gonna pull it over. Okay. So they're touching. Now they're touching. We should be good to go. It's not gonna give us the interesting. But sometimes you can't do that. And you're like, okay. there's nothing to grab or pull or stretch. And you're just like, you son of a gun. But if I was so if I was really doing a bar and all that stuff, like we would have been, we we would have not the diagnostic wax that we would have been done already. Look at this three shape. You are not looking good right now. Oh well, because of what happened before, and now this one's not probably. It, I'm gonna try, but it's making me mad. Um, this is the worst webinar I've ever done. So we did one. Don't say that. People are learning a lot. No, no, I'm having fun. But like yeah, no, the but worst three, three shapes ever done during the Oh, the worst that. the three shape has performed. Okay. I will, that's fine. That's that I would allow you to say, but people are learning. I'm learning a ton. And I know now why people are so frustrated by the time they call me. Well, the two pro I shouldn't even need, you know, the two problems that I had, I'm just going to try. This is ugly. It shouldn't work, but I'm going to try because sometimes when you have it just right and it doesn't work, just go crazy and see what happens because that's how you learn. Um so yeah. Miguel says you're not working on four five. That's twelve. <clears throat> Was it saying four five? I don't know. Mm. 
All right. Thank you, Miguel. I could have sat here forever. So that's, the, that's the not in my element, not really. Yeah, not, yeah. I'm not doing what I would normally do. <clears throat> I'm trying to do it quick and like, because there's other things I can do that I can't show anyone. There I, would you just, I would probably, if I really had a problem, I would just start saving all of these. Every piece and then just make put them in one and continue on. Yeah. Um, but we want to get things done, you know, in three shape. You owe Miguel a taco, he says. Where do I mail it? I got his address. I'll get it to you. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> oh, man, I logged in to help somebody one day and what is it, four or five again? So unable to attach the connector on four and five. Let's actually take a look at it. Get okay. rid of this. This is three, this is four, and it wants to connect to five. Uh, da, 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 da. We're gonna get rid of our connector. Yeah, we didn't even get rid of it. That's that probably would have helped. And they're touching because they're holding hands there. Oh. Silly. Well, there's just like the, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I've been using, all right. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Dixon. I work at Decadent Laboratory. My, <laughs> my, my own Decadent Laboratory is in Brooklyn. Here in Greenpoint, I live about two miles away over there in Queens. Uh, I come in here every day, and I don't have this problem. Um, but no, I've been doing this for 20 years. And then 10 years ago, I sat down in front of 3Shape. And I mean, why would I go learn some other software? After 10 years of riding a bike, I'm going to learn how to ride some new thing that, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm going to stick with it to the death. But you see that Miguel helped me. He pointed in. Yes, I love that. I love and that. And that it's actually tooth number four and five. That I was messing with. But we would cut this to the gingiva. I mean, we can do it. It's probably, it's not, so the thing, this isn't prepared to cut to the gingiva. We have all this stuff going on, but I, you know, I'm not even going to click it because it could end up in a, could be a problem. This is not, these materials are not prepared to cut to gingerbre yet. They should have been smoothed out. This would have been this way. But we're going to hit finalize anyway and pretend that this bar actually is what we want. Okay. But we did, in fact, you know, besides being completely wasted um, and belligerent, we were able to get it get it done. So we want to make that a bar real fast, right? Well, we didn't even really design it very well for the bar. Let's pretend we did the five-minute bar. I got. We got to do another one. Okay. Um, we got to do a 30 minute quick webinar where I actually do it, but let's put the crowns on here, right? Yes. Now we can go copy and append this one right here. And that's probably what you should do because then you have the entire arch uh, to have landmarks and stuff. You don't have to do anything. We copied the order. So this is the, the, the work order for the copy. We don't have to change anything right now. All we're doing is appending and now you'll see these became, you know, one file. I'll show you. Go to our scans. We only have one. And this is our preparation scan now. It's got both of them. So now you can go in and bring this in as a scan and your anatomy for reuse and all your crowns will show up and you just draw your margins, right? Okay. So, I mean, that's it. That's it? It was so easy? <laughs> but we, we are so overboard. I think we should stop because we still have to, like, do questions or something. Okay, so here's but my... We're doing this again. Then. We're doing this again, and we're going to... Um, I'm just going to yeah. make a 30-minute video, and you just load it onto your thing, and it'll be legitimate. How about that? Okay, I like it. I like it. I'll have it done in, like, six months. No, I'm just kidding. I'll <laughs> get it done. Because that was just okay. silly. I... But you know what? Like, I think even though they, I think the viewers probably thought that they were going to get to see like step by step, start to finish. The thing is, they learned some workarounds today and learned some issues to anticipate. What you said earlier about you have to know, you have to have some foresight and know what can yeah, happen. Yeah, you really do. It's all about that. And it's going through experiences like what you just showed that give you that foresight. You don't get that by somebody telling you what happened to them one day. You get it by watching it, experiencing it. So I think everybody here is going to have a lot more foresight than they did before. Yeah. Uh, we can do this again anytime. Yeah. And we, I think you're right. Let's do a pre-recorded. Um, and that way we make sure we can take the questions live. But we know that we're going to be able to show everybody well, from start to finish every step. 
maybe um, when this is over, you have the chat log, right? Yep. You can go look at it. So why don't you guys ask an actual question and I'll do like little one, two minute videos on how to answer it. And, you know, we'll do that. Let me, I don't know. I apologize that the software is not perfect. Um, so this, I don't remember the patient or I'd go find the actual final images. I don't remember. I just grabbed, the reason I grabbed this one, I don't remember. Well, I mean, I, maybe you have to find a different case or fix some things in the early design of it that, that will make us able to go all the way through. But I think let's just find a case that's good for you to show start to finish. We'll pre-record it, but I still want to do another live stream so that we can have people asking questions live. We can pause. Yeah, let's do another one. Whenever. Let's. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. We can pause the video whenever and then, um, yeah, because like you said, you've got to be in your element. Nobody, none of the people on this live feed design three shape thimble bridges live in front of an unknown audience all day, every day. Nobody does that. That's not reality. So do it in your element, do a screen capture, and then let's show that screen capture in this environment so we can interact and, and, and people can ask questions. I think that's probably the best way to go, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, so this is the thing. If you don't know how to use 3Shape, you didn't learn crap today. But if you do know how to use 3Shape, you did learn things today, and you're like, okay, okay, I'm going to try that. No, but What happens is everybody's really busy, and it's difficult to be like, I'm going to try something new when you don't have a lot of time. Um, sure. But eventually what happens is eventually they try it, and then they stick to it. Um, well, and Alan, Alan Garcia has left a comment. Great job. Learn tons. Thanks. I feel better knowing others live my life with 3Shape. I mean, even if this was just – a way for people to see they're not alone. Like everybody has these issues, you know? Well, th so the issues that we have with this case, we shouldn't be having any issues. It's just, I'm like yeah. so drunk right now. Um, no, you're not. So Phil so, says in the pre-record, please do a workflow from getting the try-in back in the lab and then making thimble bar. So I think that's what we do. Let's just do, let's set a goal to do that pretty soon. Who said and that? then let's go back live. Phil Reddington. Why doesn't Phil do it? Oh, I don't, I think he wants yeah. you to do it. Well, but I know Phil is working with um, Three Shape now. But I thought he was doing Xcode. Phil, are you doing Xocad or Three Shape for these? He's got he's got a little Three Shape in in the house now, I believe. And okay. I think I think Prashemic was showing him stuff, and it's like, well, if Prashemic is showing you stuff, you don't need me to show you anything. <laughs> I don't know. I think you've got some things figured out. Man, Mark, I'm so grateful that you were willing to do this because this is truly the hot seat for anybody to design live. Oh, you're tired I'm now. Pass out. It's you so wasted. Pass out. So thank you so, Slapping. so much. Oh, I think everybody watching just know we are going to do, um, our goal is to do a pre-recorded session and then bring it back to you live and let you ask questions. Alyssa, the woman, the, the wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> you hear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got her earbuds in too. No, it was fun. Um, it was fun. I have cases I need to finish and like ship today. Okay, go for I'll it. Be here, well, I'll be here tomorrow. Oh, uh, Phil okay. says I use ExoCAD for these, but we have three shape and even dental wings. Tony says he really enjoyed the webinar. Learned a fair bit of really interesting stuff. Thank you again, Mr. Dixon. I, I mean, I think everybody really loved it. I enjoyed it. Hey, Thank if you, you so much. Everybody just go to Google and search Mark Dixon Dental. Go to Facebook, Mark Dixon three shape. Like you'll get all kinds of videos. There's plenty yeah. out there. Um, I try to just not be boring. And yeah. maybe it's more enjoyable to watch a 10 minute video, but Hey, if you watch this two hour video, let me know. Get on you. I'm sorry for wasting two hours of your time. No, thank you Tim, for allowing me to waste two hours of your customer's time. Um, what else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're coming back for episode two, right? It's a, it's a date. Oh, it's a date. And I just remembered everything I told you about. We should do this real quick and wrap it up. And we didn't. <laughs> it's a date, man. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will see you next time. And we'll see you next time with Mark. I will let everybody know when episode or part two of this episode will be. And until next time. I apologize. You. No, don't. <laughs> you are awesome. All right, uh, guys. Yeah. It's always fun. Bye, everybody. Bye.